Yo, what it do guys, and welcome to another video uh, based upon Warframe's recent release of Empyrean, that's update 27 of Railjack. Uh, today we're going to be looking at some avionics, we're going to be looking at some intrinsics, and kind of just picking out and adjusting as to and explaining what are the better things to be taken here and there so people get more of a familiarization with uh, the railjack and uh, getting into missions to make sure they're all ready. So first things first, we're kind of on the platform within the uh, dojo. Um, if you do press M on your map, you can see your legends and you can find out where's what and what's what. So we're gonna go over towards this platform as this is the platform you'll most get familiar with. You can always do fast travel and click towards the dry dock. That's always a quicker way of just reaching right here. So. Uh, on the left hand side we've got research on the right hand side we've got railjack configuration um you can't quite see it because everyone's in the way right there but that's okay so on the left hand side is the research now with the research we can just adjust it by progress some of the stuff you'll you will already have you've just got to go and get the materials for it and you've got to go ahead and fabricate it so once you've fabricated it um you will now be able to use these weaponry now majority of this stuff is for nose turrets and wing turrets and that these ones here are the missiles uh for the ordnance uh for the very uh front again the nose turrets and also for the side the wing turrets as well so uh basically just the weaponry to kind of allow you to adjust and start to understand what's what and uh, familiarize yourself with all of them definitely take your time and find out what works better for you what works better for your team besides from that there is all of this other progress uh, mostly mk1s because we're more likely got to research our way up a tree um so do start researching every every single one of these as soon as you possibly can as soon as you get in start researching it uh, the materials will be changed over towards how much your clan has and the amount of progress that you need to get in there but then once you fabricate them that's going to be like an individual uh, thing it is as is everything within the dojo so there should be you and you should be pretty familiar with this except from the fact that you can uh, research near enough everything normally when you're inside a dojo you tend to do things one by one and so forth now as for the uh, railjack configuration let's go ahead and familiarize ourselves with all of this so we'll uh, we'll look up in the top left hand side and we'll start working our way around to every single little bit components armaments avionics payload intrinsics and customization so let's start with the components components of the railjack are simply going to be how you can get around um, your defenses uh, and how much avionics capacity you can have and flux capacity and so forth so let's start with the shield array go figure it's going to be just to do with shields so you want to make sure you can try and get as much shield capacity as possible with as little shield regeneration delay as possible as well well sorry i mean with as much shield regeneration delay as possible as well so uh, your shields can come back quicker as you can see down here and you'll have more capacity for your shields um where do you find these pieces you will find these pieces um as they're called wreckage whenever you start playing railjack depending on which uh proxima you've gone across to uh, gonna played on earth proxima saturn proxima uh, veil proxima uh, just keep playing and you will go ahead and slowly pick up some wreckages uh, as you uh do some railjack and imperium content um, so this is the first part is for the shields second part is for the engines you know how quicker you want to go and move there are some unique uh statistics that are added towards it so for example on this one here we got the engine speed we got the boosts speed multiplier and finally with the tenor on board gain a 20 percent weapon damage increase now sometimes these things here will be rolled differently now what's really interesting about these is that they are unique rolls as well this isn't just this one so i can get another zekti uh zekki engines mk3 and they could have completely different stats which means there are rng uh, values within it but i think at the end of the day it doesn't really overly matter too too much i wouldn't worry and and have the best railjack at the end of the world just as good as you can equip, equip your rail, railjack do go ahead and do so it will work really really well for you so engines just for getting around mostly speeding yourself up and helping your uh, railjack get from a to be nice and quick and finding your reactor now your reactor is to do with flux capacity and avionics capacity and i know that probably doesn't mean an awful lot so we'll go ahead and break it down uh, for you guys to understand and i'll give you an, a good analogy towards this so avionics capacity what is avionics capacity imagine you have a warframe or if you have a weapon and when you go ahead and put an orican catalyst or a orican reactor on the warframe or the weapon uh, you get more capacity essentially this is this this is a, a bigger way of allowing us to equip more avionics which you can just use as the word mod so this is another way to, for us to equip more mods within our capacity within our threshold of how much that we have and we can put in there 
So that's what the avionics capacity is. The flux capacity is when we can go ahead and use battle avionics, which imagine using like Warframe abilities. It's essentially that. Um, the energy side of it though is something that you will have to get back um, with your forge. And we'll kind of explain that in a bit, which is the forge capacity. We'll get to that in a bit. Um, but yes, the flux capacity is mostly spending your abilities and the avionic capacity is the overall how much mods and how much avionics you can put on your railjack. Over here we've, uh, we have armaments. Armaments are purely for weapons. So we'll start off with the nose turrets, then the wing turrets on the side, and finally the ordnance, which are the missiles. Uh, again, these are attached towards the nose and the wing uh, turrets as well. So everybody and anybody can near enough go ahead and use them. The uh, turrets are purely based upon heat generation and uh, how much they can overheat and so forth. So the more that you upgrade your turrets, uh, the more, or sorry, the less shots it takes for you to reach your uh, overheat threshold. So you will have to uh, micromanage that with some avionics and so forth, but we'll get to that in a minute. Again, you can go ahead and change them to what you want to go ahead and change them. You will pick up an awful lot of wreckage and so forth. Now, if you do ever have some of these and you don't want them, you will have a capacity of 30 wreckage. So that means all of these and all of these so you'll have a max capacity there of 30. Once you hit 30, you can no longer pick up any more unless you scrap either what you have um, or any that do come in when you hit 30 will automatically be scrapped. So what you do want to go and do, let's say I don't want Vida, Photo, MK3. Um, I can just go down towards here and click scrap. So that will give me 75 direct. Uh, we'll explain about all these values as well. You can also just rush it straight away. Um, I believe you get these from the Warframe market. I haven't actually had a little look as to where you get these from, uh, but you can just go ahead and rush it straight away. If not, and you actually want this weapon, you will go and click repair, and providing you've got absolutely everything you need in there, you can go ahead and contribute all your stuff in there, and then go ahead and get it built. It will take a 12 hour, I think it's about 12 hour, um, period where you will have to uh, then slowly repair it, um, but you can always rush that for I think about 20 platinum. Uh, which is basically what I did for this uh, Zekti uh, Carson. Oh, I can never pronounce it. Zekti Carsionics um, for my uh, nose turret. Um, but do familiarize yourself with all of the different weaponry. And again, it's going to be uh, situational as to which one uh, attributes to how you play. Okay. Some of them are hit scan. Most of them are projectile as well. So it really just depends on how far and close and so forth you want to go and put your railjack. Uh, over here we have the avionics. Now this is what I was speaking about beforehand. Unfortunately this is bugged right now. Give me two seconds. There we go. That's a bit better. That's my uh, current uh, layout right now. So again, this is the avionics. This is what I was talking about where you go ahead and put in mods and start ranking them up and how we do this. Now this is actually a very good grid. Um, not so much this part here, but just uh, the layout of it. Everything here is broken down really, really well. So I'm a big fan of uh, the way that they have done this. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is have a little look at these slots uh, on the first uh, line. So let me go ahead and remove these just for an example. And you can see that I'm getting more avionics capacity back. So again, just like how you would put mods on a Warframe or mods on a weapon, uh, this is how it dictates it. Now you will go to notice that there are little dots underneath here. Um, these are kind of filled in. These ones have one. Uh, these ones have an awful lot, but these ones have three. Now, this is where it's a little bit different. Imagine you had a maxed out vitality mod for your Warframe. Now, vitality is a mod that will give you HP. Uh, so imagine you had a maxed out mod. Now imagine that mod could also go ahead and get extra over points, if you will. Yeah, it's it's a little it's a little interesting. So what you can go and do is you can upgrade the grid. And these will actually give any mod that you put in here will automatically get an extra plus three. So even if the mod itself is ranked or even if the mod is unranked, this isn't always an extra plus three. Now this is really good. I actually kind of like this. So instead of doing things like former in and stuff like that and so forth, um, this is taking a different approach towards it where you're basically ranking up the grids one by one and getting all of that sorted on out. So uh, you definitely do want to go and rank up all of your grids, but take your time with it. Um, I do recommend definitely getting the first three out there. And then what I go ahead and do from here is I start putting in things like HP, armor, and shields. Uh, from what I'm aware of within Warframe um, uh, Imperium, you cannot bypass the shields. Uh, it doesn't work like that, but 
within Warframe, we do know that you can bypass shields uh, with things like uh, certain procs, toxin procs, slash procs, and so forth. I don't think there's a way that they can go and bypass the shields, but I could be wrong. However, there may be weapons that they do go and use against us that can lower our shields down uh, quite significantly. You will find your shields dropping very, very quick at the beginning. Uh, the Railjack, when you first get into Empyrean, is actually quite squishy. It's, it's very, very weak. So you do want to try and get as many avionics as you can. And again, where do you get these avionics, these mods and so forth? Um, you will get them when you keep playing, so you'll loot them as drops, okay? So uh, let's go and have a little look here. So if I go and take this one, and uh, if I just quickly back out so you can go ahead and see these values. Whoops, I just rolled. Uh, so I, you can go ahead and see these values. So what have we got right now? We currently have 1,000 health. So if I click on this one here, and I'm going to search for a mod called Bulkhead uh, in the Lavin School right now. I'll explain the schools in a second. This increases the hole by 72%. So if I go and click on it there, you can see 1,720, right? But you see, instead of it having little one dot, so if I go and take it off again and just show you, it actually has only one dot, so I can only rank this up once. When I put it in, it now has two dots, okay? But it is telling me that whenever I click on this, it will always go ahead and get an extra one, hence why you see increase hole by 72%. Uh, so we do want to go ahead and keep paying attention toward these uh, values as well. Um, what we will go ahead and do here, what we will go ahead and do here is uh, we will put uh, the bulkhead up onto uh, this one here. And as you can see, it's gone up to 120%. So let's go and click right there. And you'll see it's now 2,200. So you definitely want to go ahead and continue to rank out all of your grids. Now, I don't have all of the avionics in the game at the moment, as Imperium has only been out for uh, two days currently. But I do have quite a fair amount. Um, but it's actually broken down into three different schools. So there may be a better mod than this bulkhead, which will be in every and uh, all schools. But I haven't quite got the other one yet, so I can't confirm that. But I would assume that there would be because this is a very low tier mod. Uh, and these ones here are very high tier mods. So uh, I would assume that there is a better one. Anyways, let's go and click on Lavin. And uh, sorry, let's go and click on this mod. And uh, you can see three different schools. So we've got Lavin, we have got Vida. And we have got Zetki. Now, the way that this works is Lavin is the lowest of the schools, which uh, tends to give you a relatively good... It, it's a good base. Um, imagine it as having... Uh, what's a good way of uh, phrasing this? Imagine it as having a normal, uh, a normal mod. Let's go ahead and say something like... Vigor, for example, I say a normal mod, but something like Vigor, right? Oh, no, actually, I'll tell you what, Gladiator Resolve. Here's a good way for this. Imagine having Gladiator Resolve. Gladiator Resolve is a mod that gives you very little HP values. Then you've got something like Vitality, which gives you a good amount of HP uh, return. And then you've got something like Armor Vitality, which gives you a really, really big amount. Now, you can kind of somewhat imagine it like that in these. May not be the best analogy, but hopefully it'll go ahead and give you an understanding. So there could be a Lavin Bulkhead, there could be a uh, Vidar bulkhead and there could be a Zetsky bulkhead. So ideally you do want to try and go ahead and get the best mod out of all of them. As you can see Zet Zetsky will be the best for you to go and get. So Lavin is uh, the lower of the houses, uh, Vidar being the second of the houses and Zetki being the best and final of the houses uh, which will also allow you to put more uh, so if I do want to go ahead and rank this up if I was to go towards avionics um, let me go and put this in here for you let's go ahead and see oh, I've already got one in I'm gonna put this one in here for you to go and see so if I did want to go ahead and rank that one up uh, ion burn I would simply just hold left click here and you can see that I'm slowly ranking it up with Dyric. So Dyric is Endo. You can essentially imagine it as Endo. Whenever you rank up Warframe mods within Warframe, uh, go figure, uh, you will go ahead and rank it up with Endo. So that's essentially what Dyrek is here. It's the replacement of Endo, but purely just for avionics and the way that avionics work within the game. Okay, so hopefully you're understanding this so far and it's working out. Now, obviously, survivability is key. I would really recommend trying to... Uh, trying to go ahead and take as much survivability as you can. Armor is going to be really good to go ahead and throw out there as well. So we're going to go and take this whole weave. I don't believe I have a Zeti, a Zeki whole weave. I don't, but I do have this one. And then we're also going to put in the shields as well. Oh, if it adds that on in there, there you go. And we'll put in the maxima of the shields as well. Again, I don't have a Zeki version, um, but I do actually have a better version here for Vida. Uh, which will actually be better than this one. So I might as well go ahead and pop this one in. It's also four at the bottom here, so I should end up getting more. That's 48% when completely max. Let's go and put this one in. Let's go towards that avionics. Let's go and hold left click here. And left click here. Left click here. And left click here. 
So now I would assume, there you go, 56. So I actually go ahead and get more armor value from it. Another way of just showing how 48% of a Lavin score, as you see there, it's a Lavin score. You can tell it's Lavin because it's got four little dots. One here, one there, one here, one there. If it has four little dots like that, it's Lavin. If it's got four little arrows pointing towards it like that, it is Vida. And if it's got four little dashes around it, you see on the edge of this one, there's like two here, two there, two here, two there. That means it's Zetsky. Um, so an easier way to kind of detect the mods whenever you're picking them up to understand which house they're going in If they don't have anything around them, the odds are they're either a tactical or they're a battle, okay? Um, so you can go ahead and just look for those uh, Distinguishments if you're looking for it. So uh, now we've actually upgraded our uh, what was this our shields? We've actually upgraded our shields even more just doing a video. Hey, <laughs> not too bad Not too bad. So definitely familiarize yourself with the grid keep upgrading it as often as you possibly can and keep looking out for the avionics And again the representative uh, schools that they come from this is also the same with armaments and also the same with as you can see over here, the components. So there's Lavin there, for example, and Zetki. Now, although this Lavin here, I've actually got a much better roll on it. So again, it's completely random as to the roll, but I could get better rolls on this one. It's just that I got a bit of a lower roll on this one in comparison to that one. But a better re uh, re sorry, a better shield regeneration delay than this one, but lower capacity return. So it's up to you as to find out which one balances for you better. So you just keep uh, going around. So uh, that's a, that's basically the uh, integrated avionics. These are all passives that you're going to put on there. So things that I have, for example, is increased health, increased armor, and increased shields. Then I have turret damage increased by 110%, and also increased turret heat capacity by 36. Uh, I wanted to go and use my turrets a bit more, so I just wanted to uh, <laughs> not overheat it as much. Uh, but again, there's, there's other ones you can put in here, like flight speed and so forth, uh, and some other ones for your... Uh, arc wings anybody who's nearby on arc wings you will do and you will find yourself using arc wing an awful awful lot um as because as of because the railjack is quite squishy in the early your arc wings are not um well depending on how much progress you have on your arc wing um, the odds are you'll be able to use your arc wings a lot better especially with the arc guns and their ribbons they are very very strong when doing railjack content as of right now in the future this may change but we'll go and see what happens there so then we've got battle avionics. Now battle avionics, again, are like Warframe abilities. This is where you will be able to go ahead and click on these and start putting in different ones. So this one here, for example, deploy a bubble that absorbs fire for 15 seconds. Detonate for all accumulated damage over 150 meters. And you see that where it says there, flux energy cost. Now that's exactly what I was talking about earlier and how it, this interacts with the forge. So flux energy cost, that's how much it's gonna go and it cost me 25 of my 418. So as you could imagine, I could use this quite a fair few times, which is really, really good. So we can always go in and protect our railjack, but also um, the forge capacity, um, when you are on the fly, which is when we're getting towards our payload, um, if I can show here, this is flux energy. Uh, when we are on the fly, we can end up building more flux energy. So imagine like picking up a an energy orb so you can use more energy. Well, instead of picking up an energy orb, we're actually crafting an energy orb. Do you understand what I mean by that? So imagine using Warframe abilities in a mission. You pick, you kill an enemy, you pick up an energy orb. Now you can use war, more Warframe abilities. Well, in Railjack, we use a Railjack ability, but we have to craft for more Railjack ability. Okay? So that will go and help you out that one. So that's basically battle ones. Um, apparently, there's different battle... Uh, there's different avionics for each and every single slot in here so you do want to go and click on all of them uh, just to double check if you've got any avionics that you picked up as the uh, representative in different parts as for the tactical they're shared um, and tactical are more uh, situational ones so for example cloak for uh, cloak from enemies for 53 seconds wait what that was 55 the other day why is that 53 <laughs> that's gone down I uh, lost two seconds D why'd you nerf it um, so <laughs> cloak from enemies for 53 seconds uh, engine speed reduced to 50% so this is a way it's going to protect yourself here but at the cost of uh, mo mobility then over this one on battle forge uh, apologies about the like bug this display there but basically you reduce the forge cooldown by an x amount of seconds which means that you can go ahead and get more and more of your uh, mun munitions and uh, revel light and so forth we'll come around towards this but this is stuff that you can build on the fly or you can build before you go in but we'll come around to that so these are tactical ones which means sometimes some missions uh, we do want to go and put these on and we might want to go and switch them out here and there so another one that i do have is like fire suppression extinguish six fires uh, on there and remember as i rank up the grids they will get more and more into them so uh naturally this, is, this says 53 seconds uh, but it could be a lot 
lower than that it's just that my grid is maxed out so therefore i get more on top of it again just do go ahead and remember those values so that's basically the avionics and um, hopefully i covered everything with that one uh, again you will go and get the mods as you keep playing it's going to be a bit of a grind to go and get them but definitely try and focus on set key mods but honestly at the beginning just put in whatever you can now you may go and ask well hang on one second how do i go ahead and rank up the avionics capacity i don't think i actually covered that one i think i actually skipped past it by accident i apologize but this was the uh, reactors oh no i think i did cover that never mind but uh, yes um just to uh, reiterate then uh, make sure that you upgrade your reactors so that you're going to get more capacity in here so you can go and put in more mods and so forth so this one here would actually upgrade my capacity even more so i definitely want to go ahead and keep putting more and more in so i can go and make my rail jack stronger and stronger okay oh it's bugged out again let me go and back out there there we go okay so there's mine so moving on towards the payloads now like i said you can build majority of this stuff on the fly so don't worry about it however i would recommend for you to go before you go into every mission to hold left click here and keep crafting as many of these as you can now, the way that this is broken down, what are these and what do they do? What do they represent? What do they stand for? So the first one is Revelite. Revelite is for your Omni tool. What is your Omni tool? It's your multi tool. So this is where you're repairing. You're putting out fires. You're repairing the electric shocks and broken wires. And you're also um, sealing breaches within your uh, railjack. So Omni tool, this one you will get very familiar with. I'm telling you now, you will get very familiar with the Revelite. Okay. So definitely always try whenever you're on a mission, once you start getting repairs, Pairs, once you've kind of crossed your first one two three enemy cruise ships go back to your forge have a little look and try and get some more of these going on there has been a few times where the game has gone from zero to 100 and we've lost because we did not keep up with how much ammunition we needed with the rebel light okay so that's a, that's a hint for that one i'm trying to help you out uh flux energy i've already spoken about this this is for the battle avionics this again is like a, a blue energy orb or something else like that that you can use for warframe abilities this is like crafting so that we can go and use more battle avionics again as for the munitions this is for the ordnance now i spoke about the ordnance over here within the armaments this is for your missiles that you can attach on the nose and on the wings uh, as well um so everybody can go ahead and use the munitions as well this is the alt fire for your turrets and finally the dome charge the dome charge is consumed by forward artillery forward artillery is the big cannon at the front of your ship underneath the piloting area so you've got the piloting area, you've got the navigation area, and then you've got the uh, artillery area. So you'll be using this. This is a good way to take out cruise ships. Um, at the moment, um, because the update has got released, there are a few bugs. Um, if you cannot go in and kill your cruise ship by going inside because there's been an issue or someone's invulnerable or something wasn't coded correctly, we've actually been using this as a way to take them down. But you will need rank five to... Uh, go ahead and, and use the artillery in intrinsics which is what we'll get to in a second now some of this stuff here um will require different engineering as well you can't just get in and start building all of it on the fly straight away you will need higher engineering in your intrinsics so on that segue and on that note let's get into towards intrinsics okay intrinsics so tactical piloting gunnery and engineering so i currently have a 6766 at the moment what are these right when you go ahead and host a mission, or whoever is hosting the mission, you are using their railjack. This, 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 and this, uh, I, I believe this as well, uh, are all catered over towards the person's railjack. So if I'm hosting the mission, and I have three other players with me, they are all using my railjack, so they're using everything I have on there. However, intrinsics are solo. They're individual. So this is my intrinsics, but you will have different intrinsics. So what's the point of this? Well, the good point is, is that you may have really high gunnery and no matter whose railjack you join, you're bringing your high gunnery with you, which actually makes you a very good player to go ahead and jump onto other people's ships. Does that make sense? So same goes with engineering, pilot, and the tactical, which means you're always bringing something to the team, even if you're not using your railjack. So let's go ahead and break them down. Tactical. Tactical is uh, increase your focus on the big picture of battle, improve tactical avionics, arcing catapult maneuvers, and powerful tactical deployment abilities. This is essentially a good mobility way of getting around. If we right click it, uh, as we're on PC at the moment, so right click it, we can go and flip it over and read them. Tactical system, deploy tactical avionics. Now we spoke about what tactical avionics are. Um, if we go over towards the avionics, that is these ones down here. So this allows me to actually use tactical avionics. If I do not have rank one in tactical, I cannot use them. Do you understand? 
Right, there you go. So, ability kine uh, kinesis. Warframe abilities can be deployed as tactical support. This is something I can't show you inside this screen, but essentially, if you press L, the letter L, unless you've got it keybound to something else, I, I don't think you'd have, but if you press the letter L on your keyboard, you can actually start using your other Warframe's abilities. So, if you've got four different Warframe's on there, for example, let's say you have a Frost in your team. If you go ahead and press L, you can click on a button just above uh, or just to the side of Frost's name, and then you can go and use this bubble anywhere on the railjack. It's really, really useful for a bit of support in there. Even if Frost is not on the railjack, it doesn't matter. You can still go ahead and use it. So uh, just a quick way of doing it. Command link, fast travel within the vessel. So you can go to press L and kind of move around. Again, this is actually really, really useful if you need to get back and forth to the very front of the ship and the back of the ship. The back of the ship for the forge is for your... Um, uh, for your ammunition and the front of the ship to go ahead and pilot around uh, i mostly do a lot of piloting and then i have a few co-pilots for when i'm going outside but otherwise i do a lot of piloting so i definitely need to get myself to the front and the back nice and quick tactical is a very good one to go ahead and pick up and start off with then we've got recall warp the omni tool the multi-tool that i was talking about earlier that could put out fires and extinguishers um this can be used to warp aboard the ship from anywhere it doesn't matter where you are in the game so even if you're bugged out and you're like oh my goodness something here is is uh going wrong uh, i need to go and get back to my ship as quick as possible or my ship is about to go and die i need to get back as quick as possible you can go ahead and enter your gear by holding q if that is your key bind and then you're going to click on your omni tool your multi tool from outside of the railjack and you will teleport into your railjack within about like a three second recall i think it is so this is really really good to go and get hence why i recommend whenever you are ranking these up definitely level them up you can even go and level well, sorry you can do whatever you want to do with them but definitely level them up somewhat somewhat simultaneously however with tap the call you really want this 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 changes everything um your you might go on an expedition in your arc wing and you could be and i'm not joking 20 to thirty thousand meters away from your railjack and your railjack is going down and your team needs help you are not going to fly back there in time you are going to need this warp so really take it, okay? Overseer means you can go and see what the uh, other team are doing. It's actually really good for anybody who is uh, spying on people. I've used it a few times just to make sure that people on my team are doing what I need them to do or where they are or what they're doing and so forth. So sometimes I'm like, hang on a second, do I need to do this? So I can go double check and see what they're doing. Uh, reduces uh, flux energy, uh, uh, cons con uh, consumption. As imagine this as like an efficiency for like warframes. That's essentially what that is. Tactical response reduces tactical avionics cooldown by 20 percent uh, imagine this as like a, a basically a cooldown if you will again better efficiency for using tactical avionics so you can go and use them a bit more often uh, reducing your tactical blink on all arc wings by 25 percent, so you can blink uh more often reduces further uh, or sorry further reduces tactical avionics by another 20 percent. so again just uh, additive on top of the uh, seven and nine there i believe that's correct uh, tactical tactical yes uh, so they're in there and then join warp now instead of you going in to your ship from anywhere you're now going out your ship but only to a crew member so you can't tp or you can't just go off wherever you want to but you can go join a teammate who's maybe gone in towards an objective and needs your help so again rank 10 is really good i actually think tactical is a very very good tree um and a very good intrinsic tree uh, and definitely one that i will be looking to try and hit 10 in first then we've got piloting now uh, piloting obviously go figure is for when you're right uh, driving the railjack so you can go ahead and boost uh, on rank one you can go ahead and maneuver so you can go ahead and uh, jolt and juke here and there again really good for uh, dodging enemy projectiles and missiles that come at you um, nearby enemy projectiles lose lock on during vector maneuver so a good way to go and make yourself more invasive uh, damage uh, due to collisions reduced so a bit more tankiness uh, during vector uh, this is a good drifting one here so uh, this will actually speed you up a lot i recommend getting pilot into rank five so if you do find your railjack a bit slow this is what you really want to go and get there as well along with slipstream this is a good way to um, really boost yourself across the map a bit quicker uh, rank seven vector and drift maneuvers consume 25 percent less boost therefore you can boost for longer uh, arc wing speed is increased by 25 20 percent so that's self-explanatory reduce incoming damage by 10 percent whilst boosting self-explanatory and finally ramming speeds whenever you ram into enemies while boosting you will deal 2000 damage this is a good way to sh one shot an awful lot of things that you're running into um can be very uh can be very helpful at times so um piloting on there 
Then we've got gunnery, target sync, uh, target lead indicators and ordnance lock on. This will really help you uh, aim. Uh, augmented projection that allows a 360 degree combat engagement. This is really good. You will actually remove the railjack whenever you're on the side gunners and you can see absolutely everywhere and anywhere allowing you to shoot through the railjack as if it's not even there. So this one is really, really good. Arcwing Slingshot allows you to get into the slingshot at the very top of your railjack, so you can go ahead and sling straight out there. Arcwing Warhead allows you to penetrate co uh, cruise, cruise ship hulls, and you can also damage fighters uh, as you're going past them and so forth. This is actually really good, a good way to go and get into cruise ships. Instead of you flying all the way out, you can go ahead and slingshot straight in there. Uh, control a forward mounted artillery cannon so this is what i was talking about with the cannon over here the big cannon on your ship the dome charge um you will need rank five to go ahead and use that big cannon for taking out cruise ships and so forth cold trigger reduce uh turret heat accretion by 20 percent. so a good way to go ahead and allow you to use your turrets more often reduce overheat recovery time and extend slingshot by 50 good utility so you get more range on your slingshot and you get less recovery time uh, by half on your um on your gunnery on your uh turrets your nose turrets and uh, wing turrets vengeful arcwing basically increases your arcwing's ability strength uh power ability range efficiency so forth so a good way to go and make your arcwing a bit powerful uh, combat drift drifting reduces weapon heat build up by 50 percent while increasing weapon damage by 50 percent so if you're drifting um which is on this one here once you start going into drift maneuver you will go ahead and get your weapon heat build up um, well, sorry, it will reduce your weapon heat buildup and it will also increase your weapons whilst you're doing it. So it's kind of like a, oh, I'm getting away, but whilst I'm getting away, I'm getting bonuses or I'm getting there quicker and I'm getting bonuses. It's a little bit harder to shoot during this, but if you have got a good, uh, and you have got yourself a good shot, especially with the uh, lock on and so forth, that will help you out. Um, this is a good thing to go and have. And finally, reflex aim. The aim snaps turret to the nearest lead indicator. This is really good whenever enemies are taking a very... Well, if, if an enemy is very far away and they're going in a particular direction that you're not going in, it, there's like a, a, a lead indicator on them, which is basically telling you where to shoot for your bullets to hit them. So you will go and see this when you start hovering over enemies. Look for like a, forgive me on the color, I believe it's white. Look for a little white indicator. Um, shoot at that if the enemy is going really far left and they're like 10,000 meters away. Um, it, the odds are you might be able to go and hit them. So it kind of helps you guide on. Maybe 10,000 meters is a bit extreme, you get the idea. And finally, we have engineering. Now, engineering is also very important as well. Accelerated hazard uh, suppression and hull repair. So applied towards the Omni, helping you uh, speed things up there. Flux Forge um, in real time to power va uh, vessel battle avionics. This will allow you to actually use battle avionics. So again, that will be these things down here. You can't use them unless you have rank two in engineering. Um, Ordnance Forge, replenish combat ordnance while deployed. Um, this is really good. It will actually allow you to go ahead and get the munitions back for your uh, for your ordnance. And again, your ordnance is whoops, sorry, your ordnance is these things here that you'll have on the nose and the wing turrets. Uh, which one are we on? Uh, the optimization pass increase forge yields by 25 percent so you actually get a bit more back from it which is really good resupply forward combat artillery during combat again that's going to be over towards the dome charge that's going to be really good so you can go and get more dome charge back during the mission again remember you can rank these things up before you go in but when you're in the mission you will need things like intrinsics to start ranking them up okay and to actually uh, to actually craft on the fly. So engineering is really important to go and take here. Uh, increase uh, forge uh, processing speed by 25%. Really good way to go ahead and get uh, ammo and everything back nice and quick, uh, especially because, like I said, there will be times where your Revelite will run out for your Omni, so you do want to go ahead and make sure you get your stuff back nice and quick. Uh, then we have further increases forge yields by 25%, so another one on top of it, so another additive. Um... Uh, increases arcwing defense health armor shields so forth so to make your arcwing a bit tankier increases refinement yields by 10 percent i will go and talk about this in a second refinement um actually we'll talk about it right now so whenever you are on your railjack and you go from mission to mission whenever your railjack's going over towards loot and so forth you will be collecting that loot into your railjack pardon me so this loot is collected and stored within your railjack it's stored within your forge okay so the loot that you're picking up is basically loot that you're picking up but the loot that railjack is also near is also collecting that loot and putting it in towards the railjack as well whenever you're done with the mission before you leave the mission pay attention 
go to the back of your forge and click refine. The only time you want to do this is to when you want to take your materials out. In my analogy towards this is, uh, imagine like a game like Sea of Thieves or imagine a game, or not even just a game, imagine being like a pirate and you're looting lots of loot and lots of um, treasure chests and so forth. And then you're going to go off and do something else. And, but you want to go ahead and make sure you secure that loot. So you're going to go and bank it on an island. Imagine something like that. Maybe the worst analogy you've ever heard. But the whole point is, is that if you want to go off and make sure that you guarantee these extra materials, you need to refine. I know it's crazy. They don't really tend to tell you this. We've all had to figure it out. I've lost a lot of materials because I didn't know anything about refinement. So before you leave the mission, refine. There are always going to be materials in your railjack. So make sure you take those out and you will leave with more materials when you're done with the mission, when you go back to the dojo. I think the reason for this as well is because unlike other normal missions, when you when you do, as a Warframe, when you do a exterminate mission or a capture mission and so forth, uh, once you're done with the mission, you just basically get straight out of the mission. I said mission a lot there, but you understand. So you get straight out of the mission. It tells you to extract, you're off, off you go. But within Railjack, because the mission is so large and there are things like turrets that can respawn and so forth, you can always seem to keep looting. Like, not forever, but there definitely is, there doesn't, there doesn't really seem to be a time where it seems to stop. We can kind of keep going back and forth and finding lots of different loot. These tile sets are massive absolutely massive anywhere within like 40,000 50,000 meter range of how big the entire tile site is whenever you're in earth proxima saturn proxima or veil proxima so to increase the refinement yields the idea is that once you're done with the mission you don't have to go back nothing's telling you to go anywhere so if you want to keep looting keep looting however refine and then go into the next mission and then start picking up more stuff with your railjack again. So I think the whole idea is that you can kind of micromanage it and then take the things out of the railjack, or you can leave it in, it's entirely up to you. But basically my point is before you're done with everything and before you want to go back home to the dojo, refine, okay? And you'll go ahead and get your yields back. Uh, Anastasis, uh, remotely repair onboard hazards. Uh, this is like your tactical thing where you could essentially uh, press L and teleport around or you can go ahead and use abilities. This one now, you go ahead and press L and anywhere that there is a breakout on the ship, you can go ahead and repair it from wherever you are. So that's basically it. Now there is another one called Command, but that's not out at the moment and that's fine. Intrinsics. Intrinsics are based upon XP. Now every single point that you put in one of these, you are getting, I believe it is, 1,500 mastery for every single point, okay? So 1,500 times six, uh, times six, times seven, times six. So you are getting marshy rank for this, which will go ahead and rank out your marshy rank bar here. So definitely keep putting things in towards this. Intrinsics are based, and it looks like that they're based around XP values, which means if you have things like affinity and affinity boosters, you will go ahead and get more intrinsics back, which allows you to go ahead and rank up quicker. Um, for a max rank of one of these intrinsics, I believe it's 512. So you'll see that it doubles every single time. So the previous rank before this one, rank five was 32. The one before that was half. The one before that was half. The one before that was half. You get the idea? It just doubles, 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 doubles. So 128, double, uh, and then double again, and then double again. All right, and then that's essentially the way that it's uh, going to be done. Um, it's going to be an awful lot to go ahead and put in here. Uh, these intrinsics are not something that you'll rank out overnight, and these intrinsics are not probably something that you'll rank out over week, but that could be a challenge for someone if they really wanted to do it, they're crazy enough. Um, it's going to take a long time to go and do it. Imagine like focus schools. Uh, and then finally, we have the customization. Customization is essentially for renaming your railjack. Um, so uh, subscribe. There you go. So you can go ahead and subscribe to the channel, um, stuff like that. Um, then you can go and put a glyph on it. So we got the crispy clean, no sympathy glyph. You can go and pick yours up at my uh, Twitch team if you haven't got one. Uh, and then the skins for the Railjack as well. You can go and put different skins on it um, and so forth where you can go ahead and just customize that. There's also wear and tear where you can go ahead and make it a little bit more battle worn or so forth. So I'm gonna make mine as crispy as I can. And then you've got colors and, and everything else like that. Now in the bottom right, you do also have toggle interiors. Um, where you can also go and see the inside so you can go ahead and change the colors for it and so forth You can randomize it reset everything else like that. Also, I didn't want to go and say something else I believe I missed something so I apologize. I'm actually gonna go back I'm glad I remembered it right now But if you guys uh, ever do have an awful lot of avionics uh, and you do want to go and scrap them There is a little section down here in the bottom right where you can go ahead and scrap these avionics Okay, so I've got 14 wing stills here I don't want all of those I can select all 14 do that and then click scrap and I can go and get 70 direct back 
okay? So you will go ahead and pick up an awful lot of them. Now, just in case you're a little bit confused when you're looking at the numbers, the eight in the top left means I have eight of them. The four in the bottom means that I fully ranked it out. Does that make sense? So you see this battle forge here and this battle forge there. What's the difference between them? This one I've ranked out four times. This one I've not ranked out four times, but I've got two of them. Okay, just so that you understand those values. You can search it by sale price. You can search it by the amount owned and so forth. So, wow, I've got a whole bunch of hell weaves. And um, you can go ahead and start sorting out and getting some more direct back to go and help you level up and everything else like that. Um, I don't know if I missed anything, and I'll bite myself on the uh, foot if I did miss anything here. But hopefully this helps you understand uh, your Railjack and getting familiar with everything uh, that you can go ahead and see there. Good luck out there. If you do have any more questions, just go and leave it inside a comment section below. But hopefully this has helped you understand understand and get to basics with what you can see uh, what you can do how you can do it and familiarize yourself with it thank you guys for watching the video i really do appreciate it if you could if you did like it please it means a lot to me go ahead and hit the thumbs up uh, if you didn't like it that's fine hit the thumbs down just tell me what i can improve on and again if you do have any questions just leave it a, a comment in the description below and i will uh, i'll go ahead and help you out with it i'll see you guys in the next video thanks for watching guys peace